Hi, my name's Kathy Millett and this week we're looking at how to turn cheap Chinese trees into trees that look fit for a layout. So you've got a big layout, you've got a lot of trees, you might be modelling New England, you might be modelling anywhere in America with a huge amount of trees, any country in the world where there are trees, you've got to do hundreds of them and you don't want to spend a fortune. So what do you do? You do what all good model builders do, you go look on eBay and you end up buying loads of trees and you get them home and you look at them and you think, hmm, yeah, from like 10 foot away they might look all right, but my well, layout's only two foot deep. These are going to look a bit, well, naff, really. So what do you do? Follow along and find out. So these are poplar trees. You get these on eBay very cheaply and I've got whole stands of them, I can get into them, in this original sort of look. I quite like it, but every now and then I want to do something else. It's actually a pack of a few more of the poplar trees and again, easier to rip off. It comes in packs of five and you get a couple of smaller ones so we'll, there's five different sizes so we'll do a few of those. We've got some tall thin narrow ones on the same type as those. Um, they're not too bad, but they just look a bit like a toilet brush. This is another type of tree you get, and these are very small and they're great for your distant hillsides. They're actually made of twisted wire. Here's a few more um, twisted wire trees. Even smaller, slightly different shape. And I do like these sometimes just to add in as branches if a certain section looks a bit naff. You can get bigger trees, and I do think the bigger the tree, the more dangerous it is, but these are quite, yeah. Yeah, they're twisted wire. As long as you don't see the um, trunk, they don't look too bad. These are really big trees. And, you know, they sell them by height generally. You just type in model tree. So you get a tree that looks a bit like this. Do one of those. And if you just put these down on your hillside, you'll struggle to find a nice green. Now these aren't cheap Chinese trees. These are trees I get from a shop in the UK and I really like them, but I still can do a bit extra on those. So we'll look at those at the end and see what I can do with these. And then this final set, they're a little bit more expensive and they're wire trees and they come looking like this and I always buy them in the kind of olivey green. And you can open them out um, when you get them. They don't have to stay in this twisted sort of look and you, you basically spread out the branches and the wire. They're often called elms or other things, you spread them out and you end up with a, a tree that has a little bit more to it than perhaps some of the others. Um, so there we go. None of these I would, these ones here, I would call foreground trees. To me, they're all just a little bit too patchy, really. Um, they look great at a distance, but I wouldn't put them up close. Um, you know, I'd spend a bit more time on a tree. I mean, you could take this one, you could add on more branches. You could easily spread these out a lot more and get it looking a lot finer. Um, and you can, you can do quite a bit of work and it will look much, much better than it currently does. And you, you get quite a reasonable looking tree. Um, and you can bend the branches and you could even, um, if you wanted, put on, um, something on the trunk to make it look more realistic, but it's gonna be a background tree for me. So what do I do with these trees? Well, the first thing is I've chosen a common color for my trees. Sounds a bit odd because not all trees are the same color, but they look like they belong if they've all got a similar base color. So mine is Woodland Scenics Blended Turf Green Blend. It's a bit of variety in it. It's a nice midsummer green, which is when I'm modeling. And if you're doing spring, you'd want to go lighter. If you're doing towards the end of the year, you'd go darker. And if you're doing fall or autumn, all bets are off. Now for closer trees, I also like to use these knock leaves. And they come in a number of colors, but basically there's a light green, a dark green, a medium green, and they're really useful for adding a bit of a, a leaf dimension. There are other manufacturers than knock. I mean, these are tremendous. These are, I think, made from cork or something. And you, you can find them. And what do I do? Well, I get a nice big container and I like to mix some up. So for my smaller trees, I will always use 
um, more or less plain turf because I want it to be um, a smaller look. I mean, the smaller trees, they're further away, so you won't see the leaves as much. So I take a spray glue, any spray glue will do realistically. Um, this is just Craft Mount permanent adhesive. And I'll just pretend that didn't fall off there. There we go. And you give it a good shake. Really, really good shake. So now I'm ready. I've got some trees. I've got some paper out. Somewhere to put them all out so they don't stick to each other. And I've got my magic box. So the first thing I'm doing, I'm going to start with one of these small trees and I literally just spray it. You could wear plastic gloves if you wanted. And as I've pulled this off my hands many times, you might well want to. And then once I've sprayed it, I just shake this over the top. So there we go. And that's it. Um, a little bit of the underneath colour shows through. You can always go back and respray them if you don't think that they look quite glued in some places, which often happens. So now what do I do? Well, I've done all my distant trees with this small fine stuff. At this point, I have to say I'd normally do a big of one of the close-up trees, which is why I've got these here. So this is a close-up tree and I'd like it to look a little bit brighter green. So I'm going to put on these knock um, laub, light green leaves on it. And you can see they're quite, they're quite leafy. I think they have a great look and I really like them. So what I do next is I just spray this tree. I try and keep it away from the trunk and make sure there's a good coating. And then what I do is I just sprinkle this over the top. And you might think, why am I doing this like this? All will be revealed in a minute. So as we normally see trees from above, make sure the view from above also looks good. So there we go, right, give it a good wobble to get rid of any excess leaves and leave it to dry. And it's a very leafy looking tree. But now in here, I've got a nice mix of um, distant trees with the odd leaf in them as well. So I'm gonna do another foreground tree just to put a bit more leaf in there. And this one I'm gonna do a slightly darker background. I'm gonna do it with the olive green. I can find it. So this is my olive green. I did used to use hairspray, but I found it left most of the leaves falling off after a while. And I once took a lovely diorama on a road trip, went down a bumpy concrete road, and it was like autumn. It just fell. Everything was covered in leaves. So now I stick to a more solid glue, and I've not had any problems with that. So now in here, if you can see this, I've got a mix of um, leaves and blend, and I really like this for my mid-ground trees. So this is a typical mid-ground tree. It's a bit manky looking, um, but nothing that can't be solved with a few applications of glue. And then you can just sprinkle it on and sprinkle it from underneath so I don't get the um, trunk. And try and give them a bit more depth as well because they can get a bit Sparse really is my biggest problem with some of these trees. They don't really have much depth to them. Um, you know, real trees are a lot more canopy quite often. And if you think anything's not quite right, you can always put a bit more glue on. So there we go. So this one, these branchy ones, I do do, do a little bit of spreading out on these type of twiggy ones just to get it to look a little bit better. They come quite flat really. And the last one, now this one was a little bit more of a nice tree. So what I'm going to do is put um, olive leaves on it. I'm gonna be very olive colored leaves. I'm very careful just to try and catch the edges rather than get too much glue on the trunk. So I'm gonna just get the olive leaves back out. This is what one of my hillsides looked like before I covered them all and unified them. You can see it's garish, it's bright, it looks plasticky. 
Now that I've actually used some of those medium trees and some foreground trees, there's a huge difference. They tie together. You can still see some of the original colours coming through and the types, but everything just looks unified. This is one of my other hillsides. Not quite finished yet, there's a few gaps. I feel really small, and I'm the largest of the mini Cathy's, but this place is vast. It's the Forbidden City. It's huge. I'm not quite sure why it's forbidden, but anyway, isn't it big? And I'm this little, little, little creature. Yeah, that's me. This little thing at the bottom. Kind of puts you in perspective, really, doesn't it? Hmm. Having fun, following the flower. Off we go, next side. So, this is Big Cathy, and we are here on a train, an overnight sleeper train. This is the top bunk. This is three bunks up. Oh, I'll tell you how hard it was to get up here. Flip it out. I'm in scale, Cathy. But oh, it was hard getting up here, I promise you. Still, it was fun, and we're here now. Let's just see if we can sleep on this train because it's quite noisy. There's a little door at the end of the compartment, and um, there's all these honks, and it goes Meep! every time it goes across a point, turnout, switch, whatever you want to call it. Depends where you're from. Anyway, catch you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you have, subscribe to me on YouTube. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Kathy Millett Modelling, or on my website, kathymillett.co.uk.